Uh, we get another match, and this one is pretty, pretty terrible too. Mm. Uh, this is Chris Adams and Black Magic Norman Smiley versus Rey Mysterio Sr., of course, here just called Rey Mysterio, mm. and Conan. Now, Chris Adams, now, this really? is a classic wrestle-me wrestler, mm. is Chris Adams. Let's just see how the Dallas Morning News summed him up in 2001 <laughs> under the headline, Pro Wrestler Slain Long After Glory Days. Oh, I mean, that, could be, that could be our fucking motto, that couldn't can- it? <laughs> Chris Adams always lived bigger than life, his days bright with promise, his nights black with promise unfulfilled. Oh. Um, he was a British star. Uh, he came from Stratford-upon-Avon, and he was, as a child, trained in judo for most of his life to a very, very high level. He was a member of the 1976 UK judo squad at the 76 Olympics, uh, but he didn't compete in the Olympics. His younger brother, Neil, he did, and he was a silver medalist in both the 1980 and 1984 Olympics. And there's always been a slight sense that Chris Adams could never live up Mm. to the accomplishments of his younger brother. The very thing that he had trained in, his younger brother was then an Olympian. Yeah. And that sort of sets almost, if you like, the, the tone of his life of unfulfilled promise. So what happens is Chris Adams finds himself getting involved in pro wrestling. He's never trained for wrestling. Mm. He just uses his judo skills. Uh, and oddly, he trains on the job. And he becomes a, a star very, very quickly. Mm. He was on the World of Sport TV show. He feuded with people like Rollable Rock and Adrian Street. If you're going to learn from anyone, those two guys, you know, are absolutely the ones to do. Um, he was also married while he was in Britain to a woman called Jeannie Clark, and she was his on-off valet. She would later become the wife of Stone Cold Steve Austin, and right. she was the person who came up with the Stone Cold name. Yes. We'll hear a little bit more about the Steve Austin-Chris Adams connection as we go through. So in 1981, Chris Adams starts touring the US. He's good-looking, he's young, he's got this karate background, which is sort of legitimate and exciting and, and really- celebrated cool at that time really cool Mm. plus he's an Englishman and that is for wrestling you know especially in the 80s you're an Englishman fantastic we can gentleman Chris Adams that is already telling you everything you need to know about this character we don't have to come up with a gimmick being English is enough in 1983 he starts working with World Class which is the federation where the Von Erichs uh, are running Uh, he's brought in as the British pen pal of Kevin Von Erich so 80s so 80s 80s. and he was basically used as the closest thing to being a Von Erich as any outsider ever was and when he eventually Eventually turned against them he had absolutely huge huge programs mm. sell out crowds loathed just incredible off the charts heat and um, the problem for chris adams was his dark nights his dark nights, his dark the, nights. the big enemy he was unable to defeat and that was alcohol right um, he acknowledged in later years and his friends backed him up that it was a real achilles heel for him and that the other problem he had is when he drank he invariably became violent he battled it for 10 or 12 years the manager Gary Hart said sometimes he won that battle and sometimes he lost there were some famous incidents so in 1986 when he was this huge star he and one of the Von Erichs I think Kevin they were on a a plane trip uh, going to a series of shows in the Caribbean and the plane had been grounded with mechanical problems and so the flight operator had said okay give them alcohol have an open bar Mm. they can help themselves when the flight finally took off everyone was very very drunk and they said right we're we're actually going to close the bar now that we've taken off kevin von eric said i was asleep in the back and a stewardess came up to me and said mr von eric can you help us and when he went up to the, the front um adams had been arguing with a flight attendant and when one of the pilots had come out of the cockpit to try and calm things down Chris Adams had headbutted the pilot to oh the floor. Oh, good lord. Um, I ran up to him and got him in a half Nelson, said Kevin. I said, Chris, you know they're going to arrest you for this. So I told him we could switch shirts and try to walk out with the crowd. He said to me, no, I'll go off as Chris Adams. <laughs> um, it, it's so switch horrible when shirts. you see that thing. He's headbutted, headbutted a fucking the pilot, pilot How while the plane is one? in flight. Jeez. I mean, just absolutely insane. We'll switch shirts. Oh, well, th- these two gigantic men. Well, it's one of yous. Yeah. Well, take his right. both down then. Uh, he could fight. He really could, said Kevin Von Erich. He was, uh, I mean, that, that was the Even problem. at altitude. <laughs> <laughs> Even at times when he shouldn't have been. <laughs> um, and then in Israel, he had uh, stomped a desk clerk's face and really bad. He had to get craniofacial reconstructive surgery and all that. and All because he wouldn't let the Chris use the telephone anymore. And uh, that was pretty bad. And, uh, just little things like that that I'd known about. 
1988, he opens up a wrestling school, and uh, one of the only successful trainees from that turns out to be a guy called Steve Austin, and he is trained by Chris Adams. They have, in Austin's rookie year, a big feud to do with Chris Adams and his new wife, Tony, versus Chris Adams' old wife, Jeannie, and her new bloke, Steve Austin. That's right, yes. And it makes Steve Austin a star. In the first place. Now, Adams, I'm not happy. You finally got the match of your choice. Big deal. We're working at a disadvantage already because last week, Tony broke her arm with a bell ringer, a steel pipe, on purpose. Now, we're at a disadvantage, but we're in a cage, and Jeannie, there's no way we can be defeated. Yes, Tony, I've told you before that I didn't like violence and I didn't like to fight, but Tony, you've really made me mad this time. You've broken my hand, and this time, Tony, you're going to see me at my meanest. Call it, Sanchez, or you'll get a knuckle supper. Those matches really, really stand out. They are they, they, they were just very, very good, the two of them, at making it seem like there was legitimate hatred between them. Um, the sad thing is this would sort of be the last great hurrah of Chris Adams' career. So this is taking place almost months before this Starcade 90. In February 1990, he's arrested after his wife, Tony, who he's done the angle with, uh, is found severely beaten. Uh, allegedly by by Chris Adams during a drunken rage, and he's sentenced to a year's probation. So that's the stage he's at when he gets to Starcade. Right after Starcade, things are very very sort of poor. They start to fall apart. He spends some time on the independents. In the late nineties, he's brought back into WCW. They have the idea of making him into a stable with William Regal. Um, the problem is Regal and Adams had bad blood due to sort of legitimate personal issues between them over the years. So Chris Adams doesn't get that push. He becomes a jobber and then he just begins battling alcohol even worse than before and develops a heavy drug problem he starts getting duis uh, there's lots of claims of assault against his former wife and people around him begin dying young so his his wife tony who he was on probation for beating she dies at 45 the mother of one of his children she then dies very shortly afterwards of a drug overdose the clouds are beginning to gather the darkness is really creeping in Prior to tonight's program, I had a chance to talk to Chris Adams, and as we see, he's wearing the the gi, the judo gi that he brings to the ring. That really is what it's all about. He was not pleased with the way that his career was going, with the direction of his career. He told me that he really wasn't showing his full potential, and he's at the point where he's just not going to hold back anymore. In April 2000, he and his girlfriend, they were found unconscious inside a friend's apartment. Um, they had had an overdose of alcohol and the GHB drug. Adams recovered, but his girlfriend died uh, at a local hospital. And over a year later, the authorities brought charges against him of manslaughter. Right. So he was facing 20 years in jail. He didn't get that far because shortly after the charges, he was uh, shot dead by one of his closest friends, a guy called Brent Bure Parnell. Uh, the two of them had been drinking together and Adams started roughhousing and wrestling uh, his friend who was a sort of wrestling manager. And it got out of hand. His friend began fearing for his life and uh, he simply reached over to the nightstand, got a gun that was there and he shot Chris Adams dead. Um, he called the police immediately after the shooting, absolutely distraught. Mm. Um, he had actually been Chris Adams' best man at one of his weddings so they were very very close um, he said of Adams in an interview he was a wonderful person to be around I trust him with my life he was one of the greatest people a true dear friend but something about when he started to drink bad things happened Jesus imagine giving that testimony after you've killed him the guy he claimed self-defence and he was acquitted of all charges mm. so Chris Adams was shot dead and uh, everyone agreed that yep in the circumstances that was the right thing to do so I mean it is a horrible sad story Chris Adams you know he, he had a lot of potential and that potential seemed to have been totally derailed by the classic wrestling opponent personal demons yeah uh, to some degree jeez and look at the points that I'd like you to remember about eating right training right looking right Regular workouts, plenty of rest, correct diet, and the avoidance of all drugs. Ray Mysterio, the original here, is the uncle of Ray Mysterio Jr., yes, who okay. is the famous WWE star. And he's quite unusual in that most of his fame really only comes from the fact that he's Ray Mysterio's uncle. Mm. He didn't have a particularly thrilling Mexican career. He's, he wasn't sort of a legend in the ring. Right. What he was was a trainer. And so in 87, he'd opened up a gym with uh, two other big stars who were called Negro Casas and Super Astro. And his first class included a, a roster of people who would go on to interview 
international wrestling superstardom. There was Conan, Psychosis, Halloween, Damien666, and his nephew, Rey Mysterio Jr. Um, Black Magic, Norman Smiley. So mm. the British team, um, you've got two people who are legitimately from Britain. It, it's worth saying as well, I mean, like with the South African team, who are a fictional South African team, the, the two British wrestlers here and the two Mexican wrestlers, no one in the arena really would have known who any of them were, yeah. apart from Chris Adams. So Black Magic Norman Smiley, he is British. He's billed, I think, traditionally as being from Antigua. Um, but the reality, he was actually born in Northampton. He moved to Florida when he was, I think, in his teens, and he started started going to see Florida Championship Wrestling when Dusty Rhodes was the co-owner and the booker and also the main eventer. And he was really inspired by Dusty Rhodes. He's one of those guys, he, he was never a star in professional wrestling, but he was really, really, really respected behind the scenes. Mm. Um, by the time he's doing this match at Starcade, he is not really well known. He's had a wrestling career, he's been in the Japanese work shoot promotion UWF, which is a promotion that was meant to look really, really real so he's got a good technical wrestling base if you like but he would go on after this to have a good run in WCW where he became a bit of a, a cult hero. He had two things that got him over. One, he did a dance called the Big Wiggle, which is <laughs> really good. And the second thing he did in, in the late 90s, he was involved in the WCW hardcore division, you know, yeah. weapons uh, thing. And he just had a simple gimmick, which he was called Screaming Norman Smiley. And he was so frightened <laughs> of weapons that he would scream, scream in a very high-pitched way and run away. And that became a thing that for six months really got him over. Are you in here, Norman? Norman, are you in here? The answer is yes. Remember, Smiley broke Terry Funk Wednesday night on Thunder to set this match up. Funk felt betrayed. Oh, because they were partners in that matchup. Wait a second. Not the dying Coke. Oh. Uh, this is not this is not a match. He'd often turn up for matches wearing like the home team's football sort of uh, outfits mm. with the helmet and stuff. Oh, like protective equipment. Yeah, and it got him a cheap pop because right. he was in the local colours. And then people would hit him with trash cans and stuff and he'd scream. <laughs> it's a really good little bit. I like it. After this, he, so directly <laughs> after this Starcade, he actually goes to Mexico. Ironically, you know, the first time we ever see him, he's battling Mexicans. Mm. It turns out he had a secret place in his heart for the country. Uh, and he would go on to have a, quite a big career there as the uh, CMAA heavyweight champion which at the time was the biggest belt in Mexico um, so he was really really well respected but he spent most of his career a, a pretty low level certainly within the United States he has also got a really weird thing, which is, like a lot of wrestlers, you never know who the legitimate hard men are. Yeah. Um, and he is one of them. So he was famous for an incident where Rick Steiner got lippy with him in a bar, and he um, knocked him out with a single punch. Nice. Yeah. You, you can never tell who's going to be the legitimate tough guy. No. People uh, talk a good game. There is that, also that sort of thing of slightly behind the scenes, when someone says they're very well respected behind the scenes, it is a little bit shorthand for he was hard he was as, hard as fuck. fucking nails, and he brooked no shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, what happened is, is he, he joined Florida Championship Wrestling as a trainer. And Florida Championship Wrestling was one of the WWE filters uh, that was bringing talent up. So he's actually still working for WWE now. He's been behind the scenes since 2007. And since the very, very beginning, he's been one of the trainers at NXT. He's now 55, and he calls that the best job in the world. Um, the really nice thing about that is he spent years working as the right-hand man of Dusty Rhodes. The right. man who he saw as a teenager and made him fall in love with professional oh, wrestling. That's lovely. He just seems like the nicest guy in the world. And it's worth saying all the current WWE superstars are just like he is one of the all-time greats to mm. them. Uh, in 2015, he gave an interview with WWE. He said, there have been many students who came into developmental with prior experience, so I can't make a claim to exactly training them. But he's worked with Roman Reigns, Bo Dallas, Big E. I love Big E. Mm. Alicia Fox, Wade Barrett, Sheamus. He said, I would estimate I've worked with at least 80% of the present main roster to hit, some mate, degree. It? it really is. I, I guess there's kind of few jobs you can get in wrestling where you don't have to travel. Uh, and presumably if you're based in one particular you know, yep. de de developmental uh, kind of area, you can kind of just stick around and do that for 20 years. That's true. He's got a lovely little thing. Everything I sort of found out about him, and there's not a great deal because, as I say, he's, he was never never a big 
start. Mm. But everything you find out about him, you just go, I sort of love him a little bit more. <laughs> He's known, apparently, for taking photos all the time. Mm. Sometimes that can be a little bit of a red light. <laughs> uh, not with Norman Smiley. He said, over the years, I've loved taking photos and videos. I never really took photos or videos of matches. My love was taking photos in a car, bus, train, locker room, and just basically the boys in a relaxed state away mm. from the ring. Nothing always stays the same. I've been on so many tours, and it was always said, oh, yeah, this same crew will be back for the next tour. But it never happened. I once read the following line. A birth certificate shows you were born. A death certificate shows you that you've passed on. Photos show that you have lived. Um, Now, no one has ever sort of gone, do you know what would be fantastic? A nine-volume collection of the photographs of Black Magic Norman Smiley. (laughs) Uh, I am making it clear that we are happy <laughs> to fund that project. Um, it sounds he, like Don Draper selling Instagram or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one thing I also love about him is you can just see that little bit of a wrestler as well, where he is 55. Uh, he's not going to admit he's 55. Right. So he said uh, in the same interview, he said, um, growing up as a child, my dream was always to work for the WWE and participate in a WrestleMania. It's worth saying when WrestleMania 1 took place, Norman Smiley was 25 <laughs> so, so absolutely not true i don't think he ever did get his wrestlemania moment i don't think he's ever been no, in the sort of battle royale or anything but honestly i mean i now really really want him to make one little appearance just stick him in something i love that this show you're falling in love with characters you didn't really you, you kind of had a passing kind of knowledge of but it's just nice that you're just finding do you know what it's slightly humans. like you know you know people who love film yeah they really into film mm. they never say you know what's the best film and they go do you know what it is it's star wars <laughs> it's always some bloody obscure yeah. Polish film and everything. Mm. And do you know what? I feel like I'm the same. Yeah, it's... yeah. You do want to say that you love the Ultimate Warrior oh, and everything uh, you stood for. Do you like Roman Reigns? No. no. Do you know who I like? I like Black Magic Norman Smiley's 1991 to 2 a Mexican run. <laughs> <laughs> the man who trained him. Oh. <laughs> so passag. Because Kamala, one more time, I am number one. I am the magician. I am. The big magic. I am number one. Uh, this match, I mean, it ends in the most bizarre way. Hilarious. I mean... Hilarious. It ends... The match is over. I can't remember what happened, but Rey Mysterio just jumps over the ropes onto somebody after the match is finished. He does. Off camera. I, I don't know what's happening. So Conan gets the, gets the pin on Norman Smiley with a German suplex. Right. And you see in the background, Rey Mysterio, he goes, I'm going to do my run out of the thing. No, I'm going to stop. No, I am going to do it. And the crowd go, oh, God. <laughs> we and don't it, see the landing. <laughs> he cuts to him just on the floor. Yeah. It, it's absolutely mad. He does himself in after the match, yeah. doing something that A, didn't work, and B, we didn't see what really happened there is obviously he wanted to do that move which he knew would get over right again the mexicans are very famous for their their tope suicidas and their topes and their jumps and their leaps out of the ring mm. what he was trying to do though is he was trying to do that to gentleman chris adams now gentleman chris adams he's just lost the match yeah his night is over the last thing he's going to do is go, I'll help this Mexican get over and I'll also do an extra bit after my job is done. <laughs> no way. So what they believe happened, and there's obviously you can't quite see, mm. but apparently when he did the dive, Chris Adams simply took a step to the side and, and allowed him to just landed. crash into the floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's just, you know... A, a big a, a, it's a classic sort of wrestling thing. Mm. There are four people in there. One is the uncle of one of the biggest stars of all time. Conan would go on to be probably the biggest Mexican wrestler of the 90s you've got Norman Smiley who is still relevant in the industry today and you've got a classic Chris Adams uh, wrestling tragedy I mean uh, that match it seems like nothing but god there's a lot to get your teeth into (laughs) there really is yeah hi this is Sam Mutznick asking all the wrestling fans to join me at Keel Auditorium in St. Louis for the Pat O'Connor Memorial International Tag Team Tournament 